Now for statistics test number four, there's a question about rolling dice. Now if we need to figure out the probability of rolling and getting greater than eight or exactly equal to five, one way to do it is to build a crosstab table with all the sample points. One to six, one to six, and then we'll add on the inside of the table. We can do that with equal sequence. And Excel's golden rule says, well, if we're going to put something into a formula and it's going to change, we have to put it in a cell and label it. But you know what? I don't think we're going to change the sides of dice anytime soon, so I'm just typing six. And what will sequence do? By default, it gives me rows one to six. We have to do the same thing for the columns. We'll skip rows, comma, six, and enter. Now we want to add equals. And if we highlight a dynamic spilled array formula, we get pound. That's the dynamic spilled range operator. And then I add up arrow. And if I just want to type pound, that pound says, please get everything from the cell where the formula lives. Now when I control enter, there's all the possibilities. Snake eyes, one one and two sixes. To count and get total sample points, well, we could do this a few different ways. Hey, I have numbers, so I'm using count. It'll count how many numbers? 36. Now to count the total greater than 8, we do not want to type that into a formula. We definitely want to put it into the cell and refer to it with a cell reference in our formula. So I already put it in the cell. And to count with a condition, well, we use count ifs. Criteria range, all the possible values, comma, and I simply click. Notice the comparative operator and the number are together in the cell. Also notice the alignment is to the left. That means it's text, which is exactly what count ifs needs. And sure enough, we get 10. Now to calculate the probability equal sign, remember arrow keys are fast, so up arrow divided by well, 10 is the numerator, 36 is the denominator. And we get 0.278. If we change this to greater than 5, instantly our formulas update. Control Z. Well, for probability of exactly 5, no comparative operator, just a number. Here's the whole range, comma, 5, enter. Well, only 4 equals up arrow divided by a bunch of up arrows, and Enter. So the probability is 0.11111. If I change this to 2, well, there's only 1, so it's 1 divided by 36. How about 0? Well, there is no possibility of getting 0. It's not in our sample space. Control ZZ. Now, what in the world are we going to do if we want to calculate the probability of getting an even number? It's not like I can type even into the cell and use that as a condition. Well, in the test instructions, I did say go check the homework solution. Because in the homework solution, I use the mod function. Now, I didn't show you this in the class, but mod, it just takes a number like 4. And if you divide by 2, mod tells you the remainder. So 4 divided by 2, we get an answer of 2 with a remainder of 0. And if we tell mod 3 divided by 2, well, the answer is 1. But mod tells you what the remainder is, 1. So we're just going to do all the numbers, comma. And the definition of an even number is it's divisible by 2 with no remainder. So I'm going to put a 2. And we can hard code that in. And guess what? If I highlight, well, every single number that's divided by 2 without a remainder, we get a 0. Remainder 0. To count how many zeros there are, we just say, hey, whole array, are any of you equal to 0? When I highlight, now I get trues and falses. Now we need to convert true to 1 and false to 0. And as we learned in this section, the way we do that is with any math operation. Open parentheses, we have to isolate that equal sign so it calculates before we do something like plus 0. Notice plus 0, well, that's a math operation, but it doesn't change the value. Every one of those ones represents an even number. You could also, as I did in the homework, double negative. 
That's another math operation that does not change the value. Whichever one you want, put it inside a sum. And that is our formula to count how many even numbers there are. Now we can equals, there's the numerator, and get our denominator. Now I've got to show you a clever solution that a student did in the past. This student said, well, I'm just going to list the even numbers. Rows, well, 36 divided by 2, comma, comma, and instead of starting at the default 1, let's start at 2, comma, and instead of using the increment 1, this student said, hey, I'm going by 2. Control Enter, and there it is. That's all of the even numbers. So now we can, because they're numbers, we can count. Close parentheses, and we get 18. Now we can calculate the probability. All right, so even if you don't like rolling dice, you can have fun in Excel calculating the probability.